This is not going to be a normal, lighthearted video, and I don't think that it should be, considering the current state that the world is in right now. But I wanted to come on here and share my thoughts with you. I haven't posted in a little over a week because I felt like that would be very dismissive and inappropriate to say the least. I also feel like it would have minimized the issues at hand and that is the last thing that I want to do, which is why I refrain from posting funny, happy content because those emotions do not reflect what I feel right now. But I knew that I wanted to make a video because this is my biggest platform and I've been using my other social medias to speak out, to keep people informed, to stay informed myself. And it'd be, it would be such a waste if I didn't utilize the numbers I have on this platform to continue spreading this message. My heart has felt very heavy during this time as I'm sure that so many of you feel the same way. I've been glued to Twitter watching video after video of peaceful protesters getting shot with rubber bullets and tear gassed. We live in a country where neo-Nazis and members of the KKK are very good people. But suddenly when people start protesting for black lives, we get labeled as thugs and criminals. We live in a country that profits off of black lives and people of color filling up the prison systems. We live in a country that has normalized racism for so long that when people start protesting against it, people think that we're protesting America. We live in a country where the KKK is not considered a terrorist group. Let that sink in. We live in a country that prioritizes their funds towards police and military instead of properly funding our educational systems and communities that are affected by poverty. We live in a country where we have an openly racist, rapist, sexist, pedophile, coward in office. And come November, we will vote him out. If you wanna be a part of the change, the time is now. But before we see change in the world, change needs to happen here first. So welcome to today's video. I am no expert by any means. I am still learning, I am still growing, and I will always be a student in life. But I have been fortunate enough to take a couple race and racism classes in college, and I have learned a few things along the way. I have had a lot of experiences, and I would love nothing more than to share what I have learned over the years. So earlier today, I created a list of five ways that you can basically be a better person, do your part, and become an ally. What is implicit bias? Well, I'm glad you asked. Everyone has what is called implicit bias, which basically means that we have developed stereotypes and attitudes that affect our understanding and decisions in an unconscious manner. So in short, we all have an implicit bias towards a certain social group, and it can be very damaging and harmful if it is not addressed and corrected. There's actually a test available that will tell you if you have a bias towards a certain race, religion, or skin tone, and I was required to take that test like two quarters ago when I took the race and racism class. My results came back and it told me that I had a bias towards people with deeper skin tones. And although I feel like that doesn't reflect my emotions and my actions, I do recognize and acknowledge that I have been preconditioned to have a bias towards deeper skin colors. I mean, if you take a look at the Latino community in particular, you grow up hearing your parents, your uncles, your tias, your cousins, talking about how certain people are considered ugly because they have a deeper skin tone. And that is, so toxic and disgusting and I don't know why that's still a thing. And even in the media, there's not enough representation of people of color, not enough representation of positive, intelligent, good characters that are black. And it sends a message, especially when we're younger. And so I think a lot of us have been preconditioned to have these implicit biases, but it's not like it's the end of the world because you can address it change it, fix it in the home, and stop future generations from having these biases. So I think that this test is so, so beneficial, and I definitely recommend that you take it, and I will leave it in the description box down below. I saw this documentary on Netflix the other day, and it was the, what's it called? Hello Privilege, It's Me Chelsea by Chelsea Handler. Wasn't that great? I'll tell you right off the bat, but there was one thing, there was a couple parts that, that stuck with me. And one of them in particular is a scene where Chelsea is talking to her white friends and she is asking them if they believe white privilege exists. 
And when I tell you I wanted to reach to the screen and punch a bitch, I was angry, I was infuriated, I was screaming through my TV. So I want you to feel those same emotions and I want you to get mad. So I'm gonna play that clip for you. Just brace yourself. It's a shit show. Um, so I'm doing this documentary on privilege, what it means to have it, what it means to be white in this world, or privilege, or whether it exists, or whether you believe in it or not. So I'm excited to talk to you ladies, because I'd love to get all opinions and understand better where everybody's coming from, mm -hmm. white people too. Well, I've never really thought of white privilege. Obviously, I'm a white woman. But what I think about is really privilege is growing up with a mom and a dad right? That's privileged, right? Because a lot of kids don't have that. And I think you see that in the African American community where they're missing a mom or a dad and, you know, they're just stuck in this cycle of poverty. My take on the white privilege thing is, I mean, if we're going to say there's white privilege, then you would have to say that there's some form of privilege for any race or any gender, any religion. If you're an attractive woman, you have a privilege. I think there's all different kinds of privileges. I mean, I don't, I don't know if privilege is the right word. Do you think black people have privilege? I, in every every race, like yeah, I said, yeah, in every what kind of privilege do people of color get? They um, get college admission now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of a big one. That's a big and one. They, yeah. A certain percentage have to be hired. You think that's wrong? Not that that's wrong, but to really feel like you need to hire someone based on their skin color, it, it seems wrong. Part of me thinks it's time to move on and knock it off and quit talking about it. No, well, first you have to admit that something happened. But we've come so far in America, in my right. opinion. Right, we have come we a have long come way, so far. So you don't think there's any race problem in this no, country? No, no, no. But I think it's minuscule, and I, I think uh, the way people are reacting are making it bigger. But we have a lot of racial crimes happening right now, so it's hard to move on past. What that. do you mean racial crimes? Like, like black men being shot by cops. See, I, mean, I, I don't see it. Bitch, is you blind? <laughs> I lost so many brain cells listening to these women deny the fact that they have privilege and the audacity that they have to say to get over racism. So, recap class, because I wasn't there to watch this with you in real time. Here is a couple statements that these women said in order that I notice them. I am not going to explain why they are wrong. You should know why they are wrong, but I will go into that a little bit later. So going down the list, number one, this bitch put quotations over white privilege. This dumbass over here stated that one of the advantages of being a person of color is that they get college admissions and that they have to be hired. A percentage of them have to be hired as if that is such a great advantage among all the other struggles that they have. Yes, bitch, you're right, go off. Number three, this hag says that it's time to move on and stop talking about it. Mm-hmm, I see your racist ass. And finally, number four, this bitch said, but we've come so far in America. Really, Jennifer? Have we really come that far? People like this are part of the problem. They are the problem. Now, let me tell you why this is relevant. I bring this up because although I am Latina and I am considered a minority, I have what is called white passing privilege. I clearly have a lighter skin tone, and because of that, I reap the benefits of white privilege. It's as simple as that. If you have a lighter skin tone, regardless if you're white or not, but you can pass as white, then you have white passing privilege. Don't run away from it. Use it for good. Use it to protect others. Use it to be an ally. I saw a post on Instagram the other day that said, it is not enough to be non-racist. You must be unapologetically anti-racist. It no longer cuts it to just say, I'm not a racist. You have to prove it. You have to prove that those words are good. You have to take action because right now action is needed. This is the time to call out your racist family members on Facebook. This is the time to call out your friends that use the N-word on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the time to use your voice. You may be thinking, I'm just one person, my voice doesn't matter. Oh, but it does. Your voice is a weapon. When you speak up, then your friend speaks up. 
then their friend speaks up. And soon enough, we have an army of allies. This past week has been a learning experience for everyone. No one was prepared for this revolution to happen, but it's happening and it's here and it's not slowing down anytime soon. So either be a part of it or stand proud with the oppressors because by being silent, you have chosen your side. Fun fact, did you know that a lot of what you learned in school about history has been whitewashed to minimize the pain, suffering, and achievements of black people in America? Well, now you do. Knowledge is power, people. I don't know if you know this, but you don't have to go to college to be educated. There are plenty of sources to take advantage of that cost little to no money. There are no excuses. If you're a person who likes to read, Awesome, here are a list of books that you can check out. If reading isn't your thing, here's a couple Netflix shows and movies that you can check out. If you don't have time to set aside to watch a documentary or a movie or a show, perfectly understandable. Here are a list of some podcasts that you can listen to on your way to work, while you're showering, while you're cooking, while you're cleaning, while you're getting ready to stay home. And if you don't have the means to buy a book or purchase a subscription from Amazon Prime, from Hulu, Spotify, Netflix, Apple Music, that's totally okay too. The platform that you're watching this video on has documentaries that you can watch after you're done watching this video. There are so many free articles as well that you can utilize. So if you're not taking advantage of these podcasts, these movies, these books, I don't know what to tell you. They're all laid out in front of you. Just pick one. By the way, I will leave an extensive list of everything that I'm talking about in the description box down below where you can find all the movies, all the books, all the videos. Um, so feel free to check that out. Stop giving your money to companies that do not support the Black Lives Matter movement. Stop giving your money to companies that support Trump's re-election. Instead, support Black-owned businesses, especially local ones, because they could really, really use your business. So that is a list of five things that um, I felt would be beneficial for you guys to know. Maybe you didn't know about it. Obviously, there's so many other ways to become an ally, to better yourself, to support the Black Lives Matter movement, but these are just the few that I wanted to throw out there for you. No one can do the work for you. You have to do it yourself and you have to want to. I just hope that we see change soon. I know it's not gonna happen overnight. I know for damn sure it's not gonna happen overnight, but I don't want the energy that I've been seeing online and seen at protests and seen at vigils. I don't want that to go away because we're on the brink of something revolutionary, historic. This is gonna be part of history one day. I know that I am not black and I know that I do not fully understand, but I stand with you and I am tired. I can only imagine how tired you are, but I am tired of seeing black men and women being wrongfully incarcerated. I am tired of seeing black men and women getting longer sentences because of the color of their skin. I am tired of seeing <sighs> boys and girls getting racially profiled because they're walking home in a hoodie and sweatpants. I am tired of black men and women being murdered at the hands of police. I am tired of seeing the Tamir Rices, the Trayvon Martins, the George Floyds, the Ahmaud Arbery's, the Breonna Taylors, the Sandra Blands, the Katherine Johnsons, the Eric Gardners, and so many more. I am tired of seeing hashtags. I want to see change. Those are just the few names that have been blasted all over social media. Imagine how many we don't know about. A bunch of these names, most of them, have not seen justice for their cases. They get swept under the rug and forgotten, but no more. Enough is enough. And I know you've heard people say this before, but I will say it again. This is not a political issue. This is a human rights issue. People are fighting for their lives. They're not fighting for their haircuts. They're not fighting for malls to be open. They're not fighting for the nail salons. They are fighting to stop being murdered in cold blood. They're fighting for their lives. And if you still are silent, if you still do not want to have uncomfortable conversations, if you still do not want to see change happening in the world, then you are part of the problem. You are enabling the toxic systems that are built to keep us divided. And I urge you to do better. So like I said, the description box is your best friend right now. Um, it's going to be filled with so many links and resources to utilize. And uh, I will leave a link to several petitions that have not met their signature goal yet. Petitions do help, believe it or not, and most of these are on change.org, so I want to warn you to not donate any money to change.org because I have heard that they they either keep 
the full donation for themselves or they keep like a majority of it and then give the rest of the cause. So if you're considering donating and you have the means, I will also provide links to organizations that could use your help financially. But I think I have covered everything that I wanted to say. If you guys have any questions, if you wanna you know, share your thoughts, feel free to leave a comment down below. Feel free to DM me. Let's keep the conversation going. I will continue to advocate for black lives because they do matter and they will always matter. And there's no freedom until we're equal. I love you. Stay safe and stay vigilant, stay vocal and black lives matter.